My one hope today is, is, to, is that I can be a source of some inspiration. I'm going to address my remarks to anybody who's ever felt inferior or felt disadvantaged, felt screwed by life. This is a speech for the quad. Well, I was on television by the time I was 19 years old. And in 1986, I launched my own television show with a relentless determination to succeed. At first, I was nervous about the competition, and then I became my own competition, raising the bar every year, pushing, pushing, pushing myself as hard as I knew. Sound familiar to anybody here? Eventually, we did make it to the top. And we stayed there for 25 years. The Oprah Winfrey Show was number one in our time slot for 21 years. And I have to tell you, I became pretty comfortable with that level of success. But a few years ago, I decided, as you will at some point, that it was time to recalculate, find new territory, break new ground. So I ended the show and launched OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network. One year later, after launching OWN, nearly every media outlet had proclaimed that my new venture was a flop. Not just a flop, but a big, bold flop, they call it. I can still remember the day I opened up USA Today and read the headline, Oprah not quite standing on her own. It really was, this time last year, the worst period in my professional life. I was stressed and I was frustrated and quite frankly, I was, I was actually, I was embarrassed. Doesn't matter how far you might rise, at some point you are bound to stumble because if you're constantly doing what we do, raising the bar, if you are constantly pushing yourself higher, higher, the law of averages, not to mention the myth of Icarus, uh, predicts that you will at some point fall. And when you do, I want you to know this, remember this, there is no such thing as failure. Failure is just life trying to move us in another direction. Now, when you're down there in a hole, it looks like failure. So this past year, I had to spoon feed those words to myself. And when you're down in the hole, when that moment comes, it's really okay to feel bad for a little while. Give yourself time to mourn what you think you may have lost. But then, here's the key. Learn from every mistake. Because every experience, encounter, and particularly your mistakes, are there to teach you and force you into being more of who you are and then figure out what is the next right move. And the key to life is to develop an internal, moral, emotional GPS that can tell you which way to go. But the challenge of life, I have found, is to build a resume that doesn't simply tell a story about what you want to be, but it's a story about who you want to be. It's a resume that doesn't just tell a story about what you want to accomplish, but why. A story that's not just a collection of titles and, and positions, but a story that's really about your purpose. Because when you inevitably stumble and find yourself stuck in a hole, that is the story that will get you out. What is your true calling? What is your dharma? What is your purpose? For me, that discovery came in 1994 when I interviewed a little girl who, who had decided to collect pocket change in order to help other people in need. She raised $1,000 all by herself, and I thought, well, if that little nine-year-old girl with a bucket and a big heart could do that, I wonder what I could do. So I asked for our viewers to take up their own change collection, and in one month, just from pennies, and nickels and dimes, we raised more than $3 million that we used to send one student from every state in the United States to college. And together we built 55 schools in 12 different countries and restored nearly 300 homes that were devastated by Hurricanes Rita and Katrina. 
So the Angel Network, I've been on the air for a long time, but it was the Angel Network that actually focused my internal GPS. It helped me to decide that I wasn't just gonna be on TV every day, but that the goal of my shows, my interviews, my business, my philanthropy, all of it, whatever ventures I might pursue, would be to make clear that what unites us is ultimately far more redeeming and compelling than anything that separates me. Because what had become clear to me, and I want you to know, it isn't always clear in the beginning, because as I said, I'd been on television since I was 19 years old. But around 94, I got really clear. So don't expect the clarity to come all at once, to know your purpose right away. But what became clear to me was that I was here on earth to use television and not be used by it, to use television to illuminate the transcendent power of our better angels. So this angel network, it didn't just change the lives of those who were helped, but the lives of those who also did the helping. It reminded us that no matter who we are or what we look like or what we may believe, it is both possible and more importantly, it, it becomes powerful to come together in common purpose and common effort. In our political system and in the media, we often see the reflection of a country that is polarized, that is paralyzed, and is self-interested. And yet, I know you know the truth. We all know that we are better than the cynicism and the pessimism that is regurgitated throughout Washington and the 24-hour cable news cycle. We understand that the vast majority of people in this country believe in stronger background checks because they realize that we can uphold the Second Amendment and also reduce the violence that is robbing us of our children. And we understand that most Americans believe in a clear path to citizenship for the 12 million undocumented immigrants who reside in this country because it's possible to both enforce our laws and at the same time embrace the words of the Statue of Liberty that have welcomed generations of huddle masses to our shores. We can do both. The point is, your generation is charged with this task of breaking through what the body politic has thus far made impervious to change. Each of you has been blessed with this enormous opportunity of attending this prestigious school. You now have a chance to better your life, the lives of your neighbors, and also the life of our country. When you do that, let me tell you what I know for sure. That's when your story gets really good. Maya Angelou always says, when you learn, teach when you get give. That, my friends, is what gives your story purpose and meaning. So you all have the power in your own way to develop your own angel network. And in doing so, your class will be armed with more tools of influence and empowerment than any other generation in history. I did it in an analog world. I was blessed with a platform that at its height reach nearly 20 million viewers a day. Now here in a world of Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and Tumblr, you can reach billions in just seconds. I know you all understand better than most that real progress requires authentic, an authentic way of being, honesty, and above all, empathy. I have to say, that the single most important lesson I learned in 25 years talking every single day to people was that there is a common denominator in our human experience. Most of us, I tell you, we don't want to be divided. What we want, the common denominator that I found in every single interview, is we want to be validated. We want to be understood. I've done over 30, 5,000 interviews in my career. And as soon as that camera shuts off, everyone always turns to me and inevitably in their own way asks this question. 
Was that okay? I heard it from President Bush. I heard it from President Obama. I've heard it from heroes and from housewives. I've heard it from victims and perpetrators of crimes. I even heard it from Beyonce and all of her Beyonce-ness. <laughs> she finishes performing, hands me the microphone and says, was that okay? Friends and family, yours, enemies, strangers, in every argument, in every encounter, every exchange, I will tell you, they all want to know one thing. Was that okay? Did you hear me? Do you see me? Did what I say mean anything to you? So whether you call it soul or spirit or higher self, intelligence, there is, I know this, there is a light inside each of you, all of us, that illuminates your very human beingness if you let it. No matter what challenges or setbacks or disappointments you may encounter along the way, you will find true success and happiness if you have only one goal. There really is only one, and that is this, to fulfill the highest, most truthful expression of yourself as a human being. You want to max out your humanity by using your energy to lift yourself up, your family, and the people around you. Theologian Howard Thurman said it best. He said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. From time to time, you may stumble, fall. You will for sure count on this. No doubt you will have questions and you will have doubts about your path. But I know this, if you're willing to listen, to be guided by that still small voice that is the GPS within yourself, to find out what makes you come alive you will be more than okay. You will be happy, you will be successful, and you will make a difference in the world.